thank you for joining us again. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this experience as we've studied through the Ten Commandments, specifically as we have tried to uh, lay them alongside the life of David and look and see how David both uh, kept the commandments and validated uh, God's requirements upon man and how David also violated those commandments and in doing so uh, showed the damage and destruction that can come from us not loving God and loving our neighbor. Uh, just a reminder as we've kind of summarized this today and by looking at the last three uh, commands that all deal specifically with uh, our treatment of our neighbor, our valuation of our neighbor. And uh, just a reminder that when Jesus was asked by uh, different people how you validate or how you uh, describe God's law, he said, well, it's really simple. I can sum it up in two ways. You love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and you love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, so as we jump in today and look at these last three commandments, they're on our personal behavior. Uh, they specifically are more uh, focused on our integrity and who we are as individuals and how we treat others. And uh, the, the pastor uh, who wrote this, one of the stories he shares and is about how a pastor uh, was, was being watched by someone to see if he would do the right thing, and he did. And, and it's just a reminder that we're always being watched and that we should always do good because we're being watched. Um, uh, so I, I want to push back at that a little bit as we get kicked off here and remind us of this. Our lives are never about who is watching. It's never about you or I, quote unquote, losing our testimony or being seen by others as a fraud. Here's the reality. Our lives are about inviting God into our relationships. You see, we don't lie we don't not lie just so that we can prove to people that we believe in God. We don't lie so that we can validate to ourselves that we do believe in God. And then we invite him into our relationships with others. If, however, we spend our time lying, what we are saying to God is this. I'm God in this situation. You're not. Please take a step back. And what happens when we make ourselves God is other people suffer. And we have violated God's two commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and mind, because we told him he was not necessary in that situation. And number two, love your neighbor as yourself, because we are now seeking our own good over the good of our neighbor. And so, uh, let me just remind you as we jump into these, that uh, integrity and contentment in Christ form the foundation for good relationships. They form the foundation for, for a relationship with us and God, and us and others. And even really honestly us and ourselves because if we're not being honest to others uh, the harsh reality of that is you have to lie to yourself before you lie to others you just do okay so Exodus chapter 20 we're going to read verses 15 through uh, 18 today and then we're going to jump over to Psalm 37 uh, if you got your book grab hold of it uh, look at it I know there's different uh, versions of this book floating around through our church and through our church family um, but they basically are, have the same format and the same lineup. <clears throat> Exodus 20, 15, and 16. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony against your neighbor. Pretty simple, right? Don't take something that's not yours. And don't lie about others. What do those things look like? What is the point of that? Why is it so important that as children of God, we are people of integrity? That we are people who literally do what we say we're going to do, and uh, value others based on who they are. Um, <laughs> you know, these are so simple, uh, and yet it, it, they're complex because we make them complex, right? Because uh, we understand that lying is wrong. Nobody wants to be lied to. We understand that stealing is wrong. No one wants to be stolen from. And yet we habitually do these two things. Uh, and we do them because we literally say to God that you're not big enough for this moment and I have to possess this moment. Um, the response, a reminder is this, when we, and I just said this a minute ago, but I'm going to repeat it. When we constantly tell a God to take a back seat, we elevate ourselves to the role of God, thus saying that God is not God and saying that others don't have value. Um, 
you and I have been given this life that we live on earth. And by the way, it's eternal because we're going to continue to live. God has made us with eternal souls. And uh, the new kingdom is coming. Uh, we are actually a part of the new kingdom right now. But it's going to be also an eternal kingdom. Uh, I've called this in our study on Luke that we've been doing the coming and present kingdom. Uh, because the reality of our lives are that what we're doing here will impact us in eternity. And it will impact others. Uh, throughout eternity as well, as well. But here's a reminder for us. In John chapter 8 verse 44, uh, Jesus tells us that Satan, the deceiver, and by the way, it's literally the Satan. It's a particular force. It is, a, it is individualistic in the person or in the whatever type of uh, soul, spirit, or body that Satan inhabits. That It is an individual. However, it's also an accuser it's a spirit it is a type and a way of looking at things and addressing things but that satan is the father of lies and do you remember the original lie the original lie was satan thought he was bigger than jesus he wanted to ascend to the throne of god he wanted to be in first place and so he deceived himself and then he deceived others and going back to what i said a minute ago you don't lie to others without first lying to yourself um, this idea of false testimony against our neighbor uh, we are, it's October today it's like October the 8th I think it is and so we are less than a month away from November the first week in November and you know in the first week in November in the United States of America it's election time this year is 2020 it's a presidential election and I will tell you this and, and this is a condemnation on those of us who claim the name of, of Christ and is that we excuse lies when they benefit us specifically political lies we don't seek to truly understand all the arguments in a situation we simply uh, generalize them and then we politicize them in other words we make them into weapons uh, against others even people we disagree with see here's the thing about it the thing about walking with God is this. You can listen to someone's argument and you can say legitimately, I disagree with you and you don't have to frame it in any way that's worse than it already is. You don't have to change it any. You don't have to make it anything else other than what it is. I am so tired of seeing the ads on uh, television and on all of the media streams that I utilize and uh, consume in my daily life. Uh, and they're both, I don't care who it is, the individuals are characterizing the others or characterizing them in, in a horrific way. And we shouldn't do that. And we shouldn't promote that. And every time we see someone do that, we should recognize exactly what they're doing. It's a lie. Okay? And the other thing is, when we go into this idea of stealing, and the question is this, what do you really own? What do you really own? And, and we don't have time to necessarily do this, and I haven't obviously done the study or research for it either, but, man, the Israelites, when they came into the land of Canaan, yes, they possessed land, right? They owned land. They built houses. But one of the first problems that they ran into was that they tried to possess it for themselves, and God had taught them that they were to possess it for the whole community. Um, and there was The way that the land was passed down was to preserve the community. The way they were supposed to plant their crops was to preserve the land. And uh, our style of today, always getting something, always getting something new, always rebuilding, always uh, having, uh, we're stealing. I mean, we have to just go ahead and acknowledge that in some places we are literally stealing by possessing things that we should not possess um, and by seeking to control them in a way that only benefits self. So do not steal, do not give false testimony against your neighbor. And then the third one, do not covet your neighbor's house, do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I think it's so incredible that uh, Moses, as he writes this out for the Israelites, <laughs> doesn't say just don't covet. Like he says, don't steal, right? That's a pretty cut and dry. Don't take it if it's not yours. But when he gets to this idea of covetousness, there's a realization there 
that we'll, we'll lie to ourselves about it. And so he continues and he pushes it and he says, don't, you know, don't want his house, don't want his wife, don't want his servants, don't want his ox, don't want his donkey, don't want whatever. And the reality of what's happening so many times in my life is that I am externally focused. And we are supposed to be externally focused in how we relate to God. We are not supposed to be externally focused in what we possess. And by the way, we are not made to possess. Go to the book of James, chapter 3, I'm pretty sure. Go to the book of James, chapter 3. I just did an animated video on this yesterday, and I will link it uh, below or at the end of this thing. Go to the book of James, chapter 3, and James says you're fighting and you're quarreling among yourselves because you want what other people have. And then when you get what they have, you're completely dissatisfied. And the reason we're dissatisfied is because we are not made to possess. God has made us to serve. Our entire lives are to be about interactions with others, serving God, noticing the needs around us, responding to those moments, responding to those places, instead of getting all that we can, you know. Um, the writer uses a story from Aesop's Fable, and the story of Aesop's Fable uh, you may have heard it before. A dog has a bone in his mouth. He goes uh, to cross a bridge. And he looks down in the water below and he sees a bigger dog with a bigger bone. Right? What is that? Well, that's his reflection. So he drops his bone to try to take his bone from the dog below him, only to see his bone go into the water and the bone that the other dog had vanish because they were a reflection of what he had. And so many times this uh, perpetuates upon how our lifestyles are. We look, we see what someone else has, we drop what we have to go get what they have, and then we find out they really didn't have anything and there really was nothing there after all. Um, our society can't even, we can't even fathom this, okay, because we're surrounded by so much advertisement and we spend an in, they, those folks spend tons of money and tons of time to create moments and places where you and I try to get what they have, knowing that they're immediately going to turn around and spend it again so that you and I will try to consume more. Um, so let's talk really quickly about this idea of contentment in a media-focused life. And let me just carefully say this, and I'm going to wrap it up pretty quick here in just a minute. We get to Psalm 37. But contentment is validating what you experience over what you possess. I'm going to say that again. Contentment, contentment is validating what you experience over what you possess. Um, if you slept good, what you possess doesn't matter. Big house, bit small house, no house. You know, the idea is that, and I know it's very easy for me to say having a house and having a bed. Uh, it comes across as really arrogant, and, and uh, at least it does to me. I, I, I feel arrogant saying it, um, just, just telling you how it is. But contentment is validating what you experience over what you possess. In our world, we are told that what we possess is important. God tells us that who he is and who our neighbor is is what's important. So the question is, are we going to believe what we're being told externally by our society or are we going to believe what we're being told internally by the Spirit of God by the Word of God and by the testimony of Jesus and countless others that we have through Scripture and then through history so contentment is validating what you experience okay Instagram snapchat Facebook Twitter those things are not evil okay they're not but when we become consumed by them and focused on them, then they possess us and we seek to possess them. And by the way, you can never possess Instagram. You can never possess anything. I mean, quite honestly, you just can't. It'll possess you. That's what happens, okay? And so this reality of contentment is validating what you experienced. Did you have a good time with your family yesterday? Did you? Okay, then that was great. You don't have to look to a social... Uh, media point to see whether or not that was true did you enjoy do you enjoy watching a particular show okay then great then you enjoy that do you enjoy doing a particular hobby then great you enjoy that okay and so we have to be very careful there uh, that we're not dictated by 
outside and external focuses because those things will ultimately possess us. They, they have to possess us. All right, so Psalm 37, and we're going to finish up here. Verse 1 through 6. Do not be agitated by evildoers. Oh my goodness, I love that word in the Holman. Do not be agitated. I think in the King James it says, do not be distressed. <laughs> Man, you get those two words. Take those two words and put them side by side. Now we're getting to some meaning. Do not be agitated or distressed. Do not be just ah, constantly on edge by evildoers. And do not envy those who do wrong. Oh, who does wrong? Well, those who seek to possess. Those who seek to own. Now, listen, this is not against owning property. This is not against none of that. So if you've hung with me this far, I probably should have said this earlier. It's not about that. It's about the fact of consumption for consumption's sake. Owning for owning's sake. Getting for getting's sake. Not because it's a blessing and not because it's something that you can enjoy and, and utilize, but just getting to get, all right? Do not envy those who do wrong. Why? Well, look at it with the right perspective. For they wither quickly like grass and wilt like tender green plants. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. David is literally saying this. Either we trust God and our actions exhibit that, or we don't. You see... Following Jesus is not just praying a prayer and having your sins forgiven so you go to heaven when you die. And we've forgotten all about the resurrection, which happens after heaven when you die. We pretend that doesn't even exist. We don't even know what heaven looks like. We, you know, it's. You say, oh yeah, I do, streets of gold, etc., etc. I, I get that, the visual imagery. But I'm saying in the sense that we, we, we have this disembodied view of what heaven is. Instead, Jesus talks about the resurrection. He speaks very little about heaven. Heaven is being in the presence of God. Uh, but the reality is that we're made for the new heaven and the new earth, which God is going to recreate. I mean, God is going to recreate this earth, and you and I are created for that, for the resurrection of our bodies. That Literally, the, what some representation of this body is going to be born again. Uh, it's, it's going to be an incredible reality that we can't hardly fathom. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. What does it mean to live securely? It means what you have is yours. Use it wisely and use it generously. Okay. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. And here's how he acts. Making your righteousness, not by giving you more things, but making your righteousness shine like the dawn and your justice like the noonday. Uh, as we've gone through these studies of the commandments, I hope you've realized that they're not just rules that we follow, but they are things that are constant barometer. They're a constant check that show where our relationship is with God and where our relationship is with each other. God bless you. I'll see you soon. I'm going to put the link in below uh, for the James video. I hope you'll check it out. It's like a minute, 50 seconds long. It doesn't matter. Watch it all. See you soon.